Little guy pecked it and then left it. What's happening, fishing friends, and welcome to another episode. You know, spring is just around the corner, hopefully. I thought now would be a great time to talk about a lure that I use not only in the spring, but really all year long, and that is a good old shaky head. Today I'm going to take you through how I rig up a shaky head, some of the different soft plastics that I use, and some of the different jig heads that I use. I'm also going to take you through some of the combos I use, be it a bait caster or a spinning rig. I use both and I think they each have a time and place, so we'll go through those. I'm also going to talk about the shaky head versus some of the other finesse techniques out there, be it a shaky head, Ned rig, drop shot. There's a certain time I choose a shaky head over those. And to close the video out, I will give you some tips on how and where I fish the shaky head. Some things that'll help you out, especially if you're just starting no with the shaky head. So let's get a closer look at the rig and how I get this all set up. All right, now what is a shaky head rig? Well, it really just consists of two things. Number one is gonna be the jig head, and there's a ton of these. You can see this one has a flat bottom, so it's meant to stand up on the bottom. That way it's supposed to stand up and always have that tail up and going. I don't know, I kind of have mixed luck with them, but I like this one because it's got a heavier wire hook. This is one I'd use on a bait caster. This is also one that I've been using for the past couple years. I got a bunch of these on sale when Gander Mountain went out the first time. Anyway, a little quarter ounce, and this is what I like to throw on the bait caster as a quarter ounce. Got a decently heavy wire hook on it. Now there are also these type of shaky heads, which are a lighter wire. So first I have the VMC rugby head. You can see there, that is more like a football. Kind of like this here, you can see these are the exact same as those round ball, but it's got a football head on it. Football head, and these are kind of nice because they have a recessed line tie. So you can see the actual line tie is just barely there. If I hold it at an angle, you can kind of see there, but the line tie is hidden up in the jig. So when you're dragging this through rocks and such like that, there's less of a chance for that line to rub on the rocks and break off. So something like this, again, that EWG style there, so you can rig it nice and weedless. It's a nice option. Or something like this. This is an owner shaky head, so it's got a little screw there. You take your soft plastic, screw it into the head of it there, put the, uh, the bait up in that, just kind of like so, so it's weedless. Similar to one like that. This does have a screw head here. You've got that type. So there's a bunch of different types. This is just your regular kind. Um, this is what I've been fishing. You just take the lure. Don't take the hook and go in straight. Take the hook and go in at kind of a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna go right on the line here. Now I also wanna watch because ones like this, I want my hook to come right out at that, uh, that little cut in the worm, just like that. So when I rig this, I'm gonna go this way, opposite of that cut, just about like that and go through. That's gonna give me a nice angle when I rig this up, flip it around and go over. This piece is gonna go right in there, just like so. Soft plastic's gonna be on there. I'm gonna take this part, put it right into the worm, and then just pull it tight. I'm gonna pull it straight, and that way I've got a good straight rig just like that. There we go, I actually took just a little bit off the head of it and shortened it up so you can see the hook goes right into that meat of it. It's on there good and straight, so that way when it's bouncing on the bottom, you got the tail going just like that. So that's way to one, one well, 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 goodness, I can't talk. That's one way to rig them. I like that type. Now, when it comes to the soft plastics, I think the common misconception is that on a shaky head, you've always got to use a trick worm style lure. I mean, this is probably the most common that you're going to see people throwing. This happens to be one of my absolute favorite colors to throw. Look at that black and purple. That color is absolutely killer around here in my parts and dirty and stained water. But, uh, you know, I think the common misconception is you always have to throw a trick worm style. And though that is one of my favorites, you can mix it up. You can go with just a regular stick bait. That's a regular five inch stick bait. Had a ton of success on those. Also, I've had a lot of success on these. These are those pocket rockets, probably my favorite stick bait on the market. And after I use these as a Texas rig and the front gets all chewed up and broke, I will save them. And this happens to be a sixth, sixth sense. Divine shaky head. So again, it's got that screw in the front, kind of a flat bottom, but it's got a good EWG style hook on it for baits like this that are a little bit wider. But I save those. Bite the tip off and look at look at how much action that has. Just barely moving it. You imagine bouncing this on the bottom. Look at that. Ton of action in that. I like that little rig there. Now, uh, probably my favorite on this ball type shaky head that I've been fishing, this type here, are these Grande Bass Airtail Rattlers. Five inch lure. So when you look at this compared to like a little stick bait, bigger, bulkier, much larger profile. But a lot of that comes from those ribs. You look inside there and that soft plastic inside is really no bigger than a trick worm. So you get the bulk, you get the ribs that move water, and you also get a tail. Hear that? That's hollow inside. Put that on here. I used that a lot this year, and that's probably my favorite shaky head worm um, that I've found recently. Big fan of that five inch air tail rattler. Now thinking outside the box, again, you don't have to use just worms. You can throw like a little three inch uh, Kitek on there. 
Fish it the exact same way, you know, bounce in the bottom. You can even swim it a little bit, bounce the bottom. Don't be afraid to try one of those. And if you have some of these that have the EWG style hook, a little bit bigger gap in between, you can even go to something like this. These are those little three and a half inch smally beavers. They work well in there too. The middle of them I like because that middle is a little bit thinner in between. So once you get them on a hook like this, you don't have, you know, hookup issues. Whereas if you were to try fishing those, those I mean, on something like this where there's not much of a gap in between there, you're going to have hookup issues that soft plastic could get kind of stuck there. And you don't have much hook exposed. So watch that. Now, another one of my absolute favorites that I've been trying fishing that vertical timber is just a regular seven, eight inch ribbon tail worm. Again, those have the small body. So a shaky head like this, a worm style hook, as you can see there, just a regular offset hook works perfect on these, that small body fits well with that round style hook. But also don't be afraid to think outside the box. Um, you know, instead of the regular trick tails, this is where those six and a half inch air tail wigglers from Grande Bass come into play. You know, that long slender body, but it's got that tail, which makes all the difference on these that always floats. This tail, no matter what, always floats up. So whether you have one like this that's round that doesn't stand up, or you have one like this that's always supposed to stand up, when you have a tail that floats, it doesn't really matter what the head of that does because this tail always rises up and has a little bit of a shake to it. So um, besides the trick worm, those are my absolute favorite longer skinny type style worms to throw. Um, or you can even throw something like this. These are those missile baits bomb shots um, more to be used on like a Ned rig I've seen people doing or a drop shot. But you can see there that worm's not very big. I put that on there. A little one like that would fit perfect. You've still got that whole tail doing action. So don't be afraid to try some different soft plastics on them. Okay, so moving over to the combos. What combos do I fish a shaky head on? Well, when I'm going with a light shaky head, so when we're looking at those setups, a little 16th or a 1 8 ounce shaky head, I'm always fishing that on a spinning rod. I don't, you know, mess around and try to throw it on a bait caster. I go straight spinning rod. Now, this does have a drop shot rigged up on it, but this is the same type of rod I would use for my shaky heads. This happens to be a medium power spinning rod rated for lures 3 16 up to 5 8 and that's where I like it to be, up to about 5 8 of an ounce. Seems to be where that rod isn't super noodly and you know you don't want a spinning rod that just bends all the way over. Some people like that for you know the real light wire drop shot you know type rigs, but I like one that's just a little bit stiffer. I don't go with a medium heavy on my spinning rods. Um, you can. You know, if you've got a spinning rod that's a medium heavy and a little softer, you can certainly do that. But generally, I go with a medium power rod that's just a little bit stiffer. You want that tip to be a little bit stiff so when you're bringing it over rocks and such, you've got a real soft, squishy rod, you know, that bends all the way over. Sometimes it can be hard to bring that up and over rocks, you know, it absorbs so much of it that you can't really pop it. So if you've got a rod that's a fast or even an extra fast type of uh, action on it, you're able to pop that up over the rocks a little bit easier. So now the spinning reel doesn't really matter. I prefer 3000 size. Um, that little bit bigger spool allows you to bring in more line. Um, generally, I'm always running 15 pound braid as my main line and I'll tie a leader as needed. Generally, it's going to be a fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon sinks, so it helps pull that down. But you're also getting the benefits of the braid on that spinning rod. So, you know, in case it's a bite that's, you know, kind of tough, and they're just barely grabbing it you'd be amazed at how much that braid helps. There's no stretch in the braid. Now it's gonna be either an eight or 10 pound leader on there, depending, you know, if I'm fishing a, a 1 16th ounce, I'll drop down to an eight pound leader. Most of the time, if I'm fishing an eighth, I'll just put 10 pound on and go with that. That was my go-to forever. So that's the spinning combo. Now moving over to the bait caster. So when I was showing you those larger ball heads, those Strike Kings, um, or the Six Cents or that other black one, I forget what the brand was, but those larger shaky heads starting at a quarter of an ounce and going up, I just go over to a bait caster. You can still use a spinning rod if you had you know, a medium heavy spinning rod that you're comfortable with, you can. My personal preference is just to go up to a bait caster. So I'm using a medium heavy rod rated for lures one fourth to one ounce and this one you actually saw in a number of videos in the spring where I was throwing the shaky head a lot. You know when you shake it, some rods you shake it and they're just really noodly, some medium heavies. You've got other medium heavies that are crisper, an extra fast or a fast type of action, which means only the tip of that rod wants to bend. And that's what I like for a shaky head because again, when you get up against those rocks and you know wood and stuff that you're trying to pop it over, if you've got a real soft rod, it makes it a chore. So go with something around there, rate it up to about one ounce lures. To me, I like. Real, again, is your choosing. This happens to be that Lose Laser Pro 7.5 to 1, pretty standard for me. Um, anything in the seven speed, I think, is the most universal for any sort of you know jig, um, shaky head, something like that. Because again, I'm moving that rig with my rod, so 
I'm going to drag it, pull it up, give it a little shake, wait for a little bit, reel up my slack. Going with a little bit faster reel, you know, in case that fish makes a run, you know, it grabs it, makes a run at you or at the boat. You can take up that line quicker with a little bit faster reel, but honestly, you can get away with, with really anything. I just wouldn't go with a super slow reel. Anytime I'm moving the lure with my rod, I like to go a little faster. So that 7.5-ish is perfect. Um, line, 15-pound fluorocarbon. That's all I use on my shaky heads, you know, you know smaller finesse jigs. 15-pound works great uh, if I'm, you know, bumping up and going into the real thick stuff. You're throwing a little bit heavier shake your head, you know, standing timber. You could go up to 17 or even 20 as long as the hook is going to handle it. If you've got one of those light wire hooks, you've got 20 pound line and a heavy rod, good chance you're going to bend that hook out. So remember to always match the hook to your line and your rod power. And next, let's go back over to the table and talk about the shaky head versus some of the other finesse rigs. Okay, now a question that I get asked a lot is when do you use one finesse presentation over the other? So with a shaky head, you can go with a little meatier presentation like this or you can get finessey. But if I were to drop down to something like this, a little four inch Senko, why would I use this over a Ned rig? Well, until recently when they started doing these EWG style Ned rigs, uh, you know, a Ned rig had an exposed hook. It's also a very small presentation. So when fish are really, really finicky, and whether or not it's exposed or not, that doesn't really matter. You've got both options. When the fish are really finicky, I would go to something like a regular TRD, or you could even try something like this with a little bit of action. But to me, the Ned Rig is even more finesse than something like a four or five inch stick bait on a shaky head or a big six and a half inch finesse worm like that. Look at that. It's a big difference. A six and a half inch worm versus a little tiny, you know, two and a half inch, three inch Ned Rig. To me, that's the big difference. The Ned Rig is even more finesse than the shaky head most of the time. Now, let's say all the bites that I've been getting on the shaky head are on the fall. You know, it's kind of sporadic. Some of my get, some of my don't, but I notice when I'm working that bait on the bottom, I'm just not getting any hits. Well, that's when I would switch over to a wacky worm, whether it's gonna be weightless like this or using just a small weighted wacky rig head. If all my bites are coming on the fall, I want to keep that lure in the strike zone as long as I can. So with a shaky head like this, it's like a bullet. It literally goes straight down. There's nothing to you know slow it down. A wacky rig like this, you throw it, and even with a like a 1 16th ounce weighted head, this is wobbling, but there's a lot of resistance as it goes down. So it's going to fall longer, going to be in the strike zone longer. So if you're always getting bit on the fall, shaky head's kind of hit and miss, try switching that over to a, a weightless wacky rig like this or a weighted wacky rig, and I bet you'll get more bites. Now, how about if the fish aren't really eating directly on the bottom, but they don't really want anything moving or popping like a, a wacky rig? Well, you can't see it rigged up here, but you know what that weight signifies. This is a drop shot. You know, the drop shot comes into play when you want to put the bait right in front of them. You don't have to move it very far or even move it at all, and you can partake a bunch of action in the drop shot. You're keeping the lure up off the bottom, so if, you know, if it's kind of a, a vegetation, you know, six inches up, you try throwing the shaky head, it's going to get lost in all that, whereas a drop shot... If you have a foot, you know, two foot leader on there, you can keep that up. It's more of a horizontal presentation. You can keep this, whatever sort of drop shot lure you have on there, moving up off the bottom. So if you notice the bottom just, you know, can't fish it, it's too mucky, or you want to throw something and keep it in one spot, that's often a great time to use the drop shot. Look at guys, you know, looking on a graph. You know, when they drop this down, they just want to wiggle it. They're keeping it in front of something. That's when they're going to something like a drop shot. I notice if I go to a lighter shaky head, for example, this is that 1 16th ounce VMC rugby head. If I put a little trick worm on here, I get hung up far less with a bait like this, working this through the rocks, as opposed to a drop shot. You know, if you're trying to work a drop shot, I usually go through about 1,700 of these weights on each trip. So if you notice you're losing a bunch of those weights, ripping them off, don't be afraid to switch over to something like a shaky head and fish those rocks. Okay, now let's talk about where and how I fish the shaky head. And after I go through that, I'll give you a few tips that'll help along the way. So generally when I'm fishing a shaky head, I'm looking for hard bottom. If you're like me, you do a lot of bank fishing in small lakes and ponds around here. In the summer, once those weeds and stuff have grown up, a lot of them are covered with algae and gross stuff. You know, it seems like a foot of the bottom is all just disgusting filth and you're bringing in that slimy algae stuff or you know weeds vegetation you just can't fish something on the bottom however there's a good chance in your lake or pond that you've got rock or some sort of transition where it moves from that vegetation over to gravel chunk rock usually on the dam side of the lake if you can find any of that there's a good chance there's going to be fish there and those are the spots that I target if you're in a boat another great spot you know in the summer like that where you're just not getting the bites is you know a long gradual point that's right next to a steep drop off Good chance those fish are going to be coming up there and feeding 
you're dragging a long point, you know, with a shaky head, perfect spot to look too. Again, on that solid ground, you know, hard ground, not in the mud and thick algae and such. Now the second spot, don't count vegetation out with the shaky head. I also like to fish it along grass lines or sparse vegetation. Uh, I think it was maybe four years ago, one of my local licks here, I had a ton of success fishing a light shaky head. I believe it was a 1 8 ounce on a spinning rig and sparse vegetation, you know, the fingery stuff where it's straight up and down vegetation. It's not thick matted and there's quite a bit of holes in it. It was only grown up a, a couple feet from the bottom. So, you know, it's not the stuff that grows seven feet all the way up to the top, a couple feet on the bottom and there was fish hiding down in that. So I was working along that line, you know, along that vegetation and any sort of indentation or anything where that fish could sit and ambush it. That's where I was hitting it. I was also just bringing it through that and letting it fall in those spots that were bare. So look for those holes or those grass lines that you can bring it on as long as there's a good hard bottom around it, perfect spot to fish that. Now the third spot is going to be standing timber. Uh, growing up, a lot of the lakes around here had a ton of standing timber and that was one of my old man's favorite spots to fish. Um, he would throw seven inch, I want to say, seven inch ribbon tail worm, Texas rig around a bunch of that standing timber, always in tequila sunrise, but he had a lot of luck doing that. I've heard a lot of guys fishing the exact same way and I've even done that, swapping over to a shaky head. Instead of having, you know, a pegged Texas rig, you can fish a shaky head around all that standing timber because it's not the real thick, you know, bushy stuff. It's a lot of, you know, single logs, old dead trees, standing timber where you're literally just fishing up and down that and it's a little bit easier to fish it that way. So a ribbon tail worm around the standing timber, another great spot for the shaky head. Now, as you can see here, when it comes to fishing the shaky head, it's a toss and drag. So you can fish it at a moderate pace, kind of the way you would a jig, even a Texas rig. I'm gonna to toss it out, pop it a couple times and let it sit. I'm gonna slowly drag it back, pop it a couple times and let it sit. One of the biggest mistakes I see with new folks working a shaky head is they cast it out and the whole way back they're shaking it. You know, reeling it in, shaking it. They might drag it a little bit and then just sit there and shake it. You know, working it too much. Now a few tips that I've learned along the way on fishing the shaky head. Number one is pay attention to the weight. So if you're fishing a, a worm against standing timber, you know to some spots they're hitting it on the way down, but once you get it down to the bottom, you're not getting any action, dragging it back to you, you haven't got a single bite, try dropping down in weight. So if you're fishing a quarter ounce, try dropping down all the way to an eighth or one sixteenth. If those fish are hitting on the fall, dropping that weight and giving it a, you know, a longer fall rate, more time in the strike zone, is often gonna get you more fish. Now again, pay attention to that weight because if you're fishing big chunk rock, the heavier weight that you go to, the more likely you're going to get snagged. So I try to get away with as light a weight as I can use. Again, that's gonna differ if you're in a, a small pond or a lake versus a river. A river, if you try throwing a, a 1 16th ounce and you're hitting a, trying to hit a tree, it's gonna be clear down before it hits the bottom with that current. A pond or small lake with not very much current, not very much water flow, you can get away with a, a lightweight like that. So now the second big tip that I can't reiterate enough is just because it's called a shaky head doesn't mean you're shaking it all the time. I know I talked about it before, but I really want to reiterate as you throw that out there, think finesse, dragging that worm, letting it sit, doing that, letting that tail do the, you know, real finesse, slow movement. The more you shake it and work it, the less likely you're going to get bites. Throw it out there, let it sit drag it a little bit, be patient with it. And I'm talking a minute, two minutes, three minutes to get that cast in. It's not gonna be a quick move it out, shake it all the way back and it's done within a few seconds. Let it soak, let it be a, almost a do nothing bait and let the tail, that bait, do the work for you. Now the third big tip is to use it as a cleanup presentation. So let's say you're, you're fishing a rocky point from the bank, you've thrown a crank on it, you've thrown a spinner bait on it, you've caught a few aggressive fish but that bite kind of dies off. Another one. <laughs> oh, must be a bunch of little fellas. Two for two after I switched over and went through here with the squirble. Just had one barely nip at it. Has been all about the old Magnum shaky head lately for me. If there was a certain spot, a certain depth, or a certain piece of structure that those fish were on, or you know, a certain piece of cover, um, a lay down tree or whatever, try going back to something like a shaky head and fishing that spot. If you notice, six feet down on this this hump every single time you're around there you got them on the crank and that died try going to that exact same spot again with that real do nothing finesse shake you had let it sit there and a lot of those fish that were neutral didn't really want to run out and grab a crankbait may very well eat that shaky head that you just put in front of them doing this it'd be like if my old lady just came down right now and said honey i got you some buffalo wild wings and just set it right here 
I'd have to take a break and eat it. All right, fish and friends, that's gonna do it for tonight for me. I hope going over the rig, the plastics, the combos, where and how I fish it, and even a few other tips helps you all out. Especially for you beginners that haven't really gotten to the shaky head, say, oh, I can, I can just throw a, a Texas rig stick bait. There are times where something like a shaky head or a little jig, something on the bottom will excel. So now I'd like you all to do me a favor and let me know, do you like the shaky head? Do you fish it? Is there a certain soft plastic you use on it that's been great for you? Maybe there's a specific way or a spot how you fish it, whatever it is, Comment below and let me know. I love hearing from you all. Now, tonight's subscribe fish and friend shout out goes to Ben Hebert. Ben, you're always watching the videos, always leaving a comment down below. I can't thank you enough. Uh, and everybody else who watches, again, my channel's done far more than I ever thought it could. We're still growing. Hopefully we can keep these going in 2020 because I appreciate you all so much. But that's gonna do it. Again, it's uh, almost midnight tonight, so I got done a little early, but I gotta go to bed. So thank you all for watching and until next time.